Hello, my name is Dr. Mary O'Kane. I'm a lecturer in psychology and education with the Open University. Um, and I'd like to say thank you to Mullingar Library for inviting me to say a few words to you today about how to try and maintain a happy family life um, during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, I was supposed to have been giving a face-to-face -face talk in the library, but obviously that's not possible at the moment. Um, so we thought this might be a good alternative. Um, so there's a few things I wanted to, to have a word with you about in terms of thinking about how to stay sane as a family at the moment. Um, and the first thing is you may have seen, um, it was a story doing the rounds on Facebook and Twitter, saying that although we are all in the same storm at the moment, um, we are all in very individual boats and our experiences of what's happening and what we're living with at the moment are so different. And I just wanted to start by acknowledging that because I think it's so important in terms of reminding us to have empathy for others and, and consider our own feelings and know that it's okay to be facing your individual fears, your individual family situation. I think sometimes when something like this is happening, it's so easy to feel other people are handling this really well. You look online sometimes and you see people and every day they're posting about different activities they're doing with their children and they're baking and they're sewing and they're doing lots of homeschooling. And it's so easy to feel, no, I'm not doing this. I should be doing all this. Remember, everybody presents their best life online and um, people are not necessarily presenting the bad days and yet every one of us is having them. You know, we're all having our ups and downs and I suppose it's about thinking about how you as a family can deal with this situation. And um, I know myself when this all started, I found First of all, I found I was watching too much news. I was watching the media too often um, and I really had to step away. I also found social media is a wonderful way of keeping in touch. However, at the same time, I've had to really limit my time on social media because I found it was just making me stressed. It was making me stressed and then as a result, I was making my family stress, so it was making family life more stressful. So definitely remember you are an individual and what works for your friends, what works for your other members of your family might not work for it for your family. And um, so you need to look after what's best for you. In psychology, we talk about a theory called attachment theory. It's a really important theory when we're considering how our children learn, how they grow, how they develop their relationships. Um, and the basic idea of attachment theory is that what is really important for our children is the relationships with those closest to them. So particularly for our younger children, it's those family bonds, those family connections, which are really important at that time. So although we might be worried about our children not having the same interactions with their school friends, keep in mind that they are with the people closest to them and that our support means an awful lot during this time. Now, don't let that make you feel, oh, I have to be doing everything right. I have to get it right every day. I have to be this perfect parent, this perfect mother. Definitely not. Um, as well, linked to attachment theory, this wonderful man, um, a psychologist back in the 50s, Donald Winnicott is his name, and he coined the term good enough mothering. And we now talk about good enough parenting. And his whole argument it was that when babies are very young, th this immediate connection is so important to them. And through these immediate connections, they learn that the world is safe. They learn that their needs will be met. You know the way when you have um, a, a young child, a baby, and they, they drop something. They're sitting in the high chair and they drop something and you pick it up and they drop it again and you pick it up and they drop it again and it keeps going. 
but they are learning that their needs will be met. They're learning it's actually safe to drop things because she will pick it up for me. So they're learning as they go. And when our children are very young, we meet those needs. But as they grow older, it actually is important that we, we reframe this thought in our head. And instead of thinking we have to meet every need, we realize, no, you know what? I only need to be good enough. So we step back a little and we just start to, you know, move back a little bit from our children and they learn that their needs won't always be met every single time. And it's really important in terms of their own capability and their own resilience. So if you feel, you know, there's days you know, you're not being a very good mother here, do not worry. You know, good enough mothering, good enough parenting is absolutely all we need. So we remind, remember Donald Winnicott um, when we think of that one. And certainly at the moment, um, he, he's somebody I keep going back to in my head. It's making me think, no, it's okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was I saw the wonderful Dr. Mally Coyne talking online the other day about the book, We're Going on a Bear Hunt. And she was reminding us of some of the wording of that book can't go over it we can't go under it we've got to go through it and at the moment i think that's where we are we are in the situation where we we nearly have to accept you know what we have to just go through this in order to come out the other side so let's have a think about some of the things that we can do that might be helpful in terms of our family coming out the other side well the first thing um, is routine and when i say routine i don't mean an absolutely regimented routine but it's really helpful for us to have some routine in our lives and it's really helpful for our children particularly the younger children to have a routine routine means some form of predictability which is very good in terms of keeping anxiety levels low for children and um, children thrive on predictability so not a very formal routine and i know i've seen homeschool schedules that i don't think any teachers in the schools could ever keep up with and um, so i really don't mean that but by actually stepping back and having some form of regular routine each day now that routine might be something as simple as you know um, breakfast then we have play time then we're going to do a little bit of homeschooling you know then we're going to help mum prepare lunch we're learning to make pancakes today so you know it's quite informal and um, but just some to know what's expected ahead can can be helpful particularly in a time like this when the world doesn't seem very predictable when the world outside seems to be a little unsafe for our children, letting them know that the world inside their home is safe, that, that we are there in terms of you know, that reliable presence can really help them in terms of their anxiety. Schoolwork is another thing I know a lot of parents are um, struggling with, and I'm smiling here because I know quite a few of us started off how many weeks ago thinking, oh, school, homeschooling, oh, a great experience. Perhaps it's not all we thought it might be. And um, I think teachers are very much being appreciated at the moment. But again, remember, you know, you might have to lower the bar a little. They're, instead of thinking very academically, this is an opportunity for our children to learn so many other skills. So maybe ask a child, you know, is there anything that you fancy learning that you fancy doing at the moment? I mean, most of us have one or two abandoned instruments, musical instruments in the house. So is it is there something like, let's go to the YouTube and look at how to learn that guitar. Let's go back to the piano. Would they like to learn something like how to play chess? Is there, you know, is there something that they would learn like coding? I know there's lots of mindfulness. Oh my gosh. In, in terms of something your child might do, mindfulness at the moment is a great one and there's some fantastic classes on. Niall Breslin has some wonderful online um, mindfulness classes in the evening for children which are wonderful. But talk to your child about what they might like to do. 
instead of thinking, okay, I'm going to make a list, we're going to do mindfulness, we're going to do whatever, make it a family discussion, make it a group discussion. What would they, do they fancy doing? But there is an opportunity here for them to learn different skills, life skills, very important life skills. Your younger children actually have the opportunity to learn things that perhaps we wouldn't have considered teaching them till maybe they were a little bit older, that you know, push them a little bit on the cooking, really encourage them um, to learn those life skills and let go of the academic outcomes a little bit. Too much of a focus on academic academics at the moment is probably quite likely to bring more stress into your household. Remember at the moment, if you can say to yourself, I'm actually going to forget the academic outcomes, what is really important is my child's physical health and their mental health and our well-being as a family. That is what is really important. You're accepting you're going to have good days and bad days and you know, that's fine. But overall, to, to think in terms of well-being rather than um, you know, that, that school and um, academic outcome. The other thing that's really important is connection and it's to stay connected as a family and again to try and think of um, fun things that you can do each other with each other and accept that sometimes you might need a little bit of space from each other. I know I have teenagers in the house here and much as we love each other there have been days we just needed space from each other um, and, and there's nothing wrong with that you know this as a coming back to good enough mothering just as we are trying to be good enough mothers good enough parents you know, our children have to be allowed to just have bad days too where they actually need downtime a duvet day sometimes a duvet day is no harm in this you know to allow everyone in the family the the time and the space just to have um those moments in terms of connection as well the other thing is to be aware of talking to them about their feelings so again just check in with them sometimes we we watch you know, we observe and we think we assume we know what they're feeling but it's a good idea every so often to check in how are you doing today if you sense they're frustrated they're getting angry to actually say to them you know I, I kind of it looks to me like you might be a little bit worried or you might be a little bit anxious today i can see in the way you're interacting with your brother that you know your temper is kind of getting high there What's going on? How are you doing? And talk to them about it and acknowledge that any feelings that they're having are fine, are absolutely fine. It's okay to feel angry at times at this situation. It's okay to feel frustrated. We cannot normalize this situation. You know, there's nothing normal about it, but we can normalize those emotions. And yes, it's okay. It might not be okay to give your brother a thump because you're feeling frustrated, but that feeling is okay. It's about thinking how you would deal with that feeling. And again, coming back to things like those mindfulness classes online can be a great way of helping children to acknowledge what they're feeling and to deal with it in, in a healthy way. The other thing is to just remember to let them know that although this is difficult, that you see an end to it, you see um, a positive outcome. And part of that is remembering why we're doing this. And sometimes we need to, to remember to say that to them. You know, I know we're feeling frustrated. I know that we're all getting bored some days, we're getting fed up some days. But I also know that we are resilient, that we will cope with this. I also know that even though we get fed up being inside, we have wonderful technology to connect with our friends, with granny. You know, I also know this is temporary. I can't tell you the date this will end, but I do know it will end. So they need to know that you are hopeful, that you, you see an end to this. Um, so I hope um, some of those tips have been helpful to you. Um, as I said, come back to thinking at the end of the day that good enough mothering, good enough parenting um, it is probably the core of it. And to maintain our family connections are absolutely huge. 
I'm posting more advice at the moment on a regular basis on my Facebook page, which is Dr. Mary O'Kane Early Years. So if you want to have a look on them there for some more advice. And once again, I'd like to say thank you very much to the staff at Mullingar Library for inviting me to come and speak to you. As I said, I hope it's been helpful and wishing you all the best in terms of your own physical and mental health for the future. Take care. Thank you. Bye.